Hey guys, welcome back to Rated RPG. Ray here, and today we are talking about... Where the heck is it? Resident Evil Village. So this is my review of Resident Evil Village. I don't actually do full-on reviews that often because I prefer to just do more news-oriented type stuff. But when I do reviews, I prefer to do them more informal like this. So... Not going to have any footage going across the screen. I'm just going to give you my honest opinion, let you know how I feel, weigh judgments against other certain games in the series, and you take with that what you will, move on with it, do something with it, and we'll see where it goes from there. So, Resident Evil Village. I have played this game. I have finished the game. I like the game. I'm just going to say that from the very beginning. But before I get into breaking down all this different stuff about the contents, the gameplay, the mechanics, the story, etc., etc. Let's go back. I want to give you context on my perspective when it comes to Resident Evil because I did not play an actual Resident Evil game ever until last year because Resident Evil, for the longest time, I just said, mm -mm, no thank you, not really for me. And my channel's called Rated RPG, so I think you can pretty much guess what type of game I was just focused, honed in on for many, many years. Uh, that is correct. Uh, puzzle games featuring Barbie characters. No, no. RPGs. Uh, also, JRPGs. So, when I finally got into Resident Evil, I did it because of really the spectacle and just the sheer wow factor of the remakes. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Resident Evils 2 and 3. Honestly, Resident Evil 2 came out. And I looked at it. I thought it looked awesome. I thought it looked cool. And I'm like, alright, cool, awesome, great, fantastic. I'm still not going to play this because Resident Evil, that's just not something I'm into. Not really. But then, soccer all around the year, whatever, year two, whatever goes by, everybody is just praising the hell out of Resident Evil 2. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess it's a good game that I'm never going to play. But then, the ad campaign starts for Resident Evil 3. And this game just spoke to me, the advertising, I mean, because Jill Valentine is, one out, without a doubt, just an iconic character. I mean, just... Fantastic, fabulous, awesome, amazing. Uh, one of my all-time favorite video game characters ever. And having never played a game with her in it, and at that time, the ad campaign just really spoke to me. So I started just, you know, looking up some videos on YouTube about Resident Evil just to see, you know what, maybe this will be interesting. I got turned on to the Sphere Hunters video, Susie the Sphere Hunter, and... You know how great of a showman, showwoman, whatever she is. And so after watching her videos, I'm like, damn, maybe there's something here. Maybe there is something worth checking out. So played Resident Evil 2. It's a freaking amazing game. Resident Evil 3 comes out. I play it. Much shorter game than Resident Evil 2. Uh, but I think it gets a very, very bad rap, all things considered, because this, to me, is still a fantastic game. I love it. Tompkins doing Jill Valentine and Jeff Shine as Carlos is amazing. And this just ignited a love of Resident Evil for me that I just can... It has run rampant. As soon as I finished Resident Evil 3, I bought Origins so that I could play... Uh, remake because Susie said it's th her favorite Resident Evil game. So I'm like, okay, well, I got to play that shit. I still have not played every single Resident Evil game. I have gone crazy, though, trying to get as many as I possibly can because I have all these Resident Evil games for the PS4. I've got Revelations 1 through 6, yada yada, Remake 2 and 3... I haven't played 5 or 6, I, I, I've i heard the reputation. Uh, 2 for the Nintendo 64, I've got the entire... Uh, oh, jeez. I've got the entire P4 
PS1 era. I mean, we're talking Resident Evil. Let's flip these around. I've got the original Resident Evil 1 in long box. Director's cut. Uh, 1.5. A friend of mine actually gave this to me uh, when I got out of the hospital after getting COVID. Resident Evil 2 for the PlayStation 2. Uh, PlayStation 1. My two copies of Nemesis. Uh, geez, what else do we have? Even though I'm never going to play them, for some reason I bought all the Japanese versions as well. Uh, let's go ahead and pick up Deadly Silence for the DS while we're out there. Let's go ahead and... Just go crazy and get all of the GameCube Resident Evils. Uh, everything from Remake to... Uh, from, well, Zero, Remake, 2, 3, 4, Code Veronica. This, this is a mistake. Uh, I didn't realize I had the Player's Choice label. I will get Black Label. Resident Evil 4 for the GameCube eventually, so please don't judge me by that player's choice label. Uh, let's see, we've got <laughs> just all sorts of craziness for the PlayStation 2 era and PS3. Uh, I know I still am missing some titles. We've got the Outbreak Files, we've got Code Veronica again, including a sealed copy. Resident Evil 4 again, we've got a sealed copy of Operation Raccoon City. So I'll have to get a unsealed copy of that to play it at some point, even though I know it's not the best game. Yada, yada, yada. So we got a lot here. I have played through some of these, not all of them. But suffice to say, I have a pretty good grasp on the franchise now. And I picked up Resident Evil Village, super excited for it, went into it, and started playing. So now let's talk about the game. Story-wise, I was very hesitant about how I'd feel about our main character, Ethan, because I played Resident Evil 7, where is it, for the first time a week before the uh, the week before Village came out. So I experienced Ethan the week before Village came out for the first time. And basically all of seven had already been spoiled for me. So a lot of the scare factor I'm sure was gone. But playing through this game, honestly, it was not my favorite Resident Evil game. It's still not my favorite Resident Evil game. I can say it's a good game without a doubt. I can see why so many people were impressed by it, especially after the years of drifting towards action titles away from the inventory management system and basically becoming what six became. Uh, so I can see why so many people were enamored with this, even though it kind of abandoned a lot of the absurdity of the original games, because even the original PlayStation 1 era games were just absurd and willing to be campy. There is very little campiness in this. Yeah, yeah you can say Jack is screaming, Yahoo! and being a hillbilly with a chainsaw, but, uh... It's much... It's, it takes itself a lot more seriously, and it's much more of a gore fest than... Uh, some of the other Resident Evils, and honestly, I did not like Ethan in this game. He just seemed very, very bland. Skipped leg day, apparently, because he cannot run for shit. And even though I enjoyed the story, I just didn't feel connected to the character. I didn't feel connected to the world as I was playing through it even though I can fully say that this is a good game, that it's good lore. I have a very different opinion of Ethan now, thank, and the lore established in Resident Evil 7, thanks to Village. Village took everything that was established in 7 and built upon it so well. Ah, uh, Ethan, you can see the growth immediately. He has gone from being this beta male in Resident Evil 7 who is overcoming through sheer willpower to become a not beta to uh, by time village starts a guy willing to take charge and do what needs to be done seven he is just as reluctant as can be the entire time but village he is just ready to get out there kick ass and take names do what you have to do kill who he needs to kill in order to save his daughter so there's our story. After 
the events of Louisiana in Resident Evil 7, we now have our story start. Ethan, Mia living comfortably somewhere in Europe, but then suddenly, everybody knows this, this was an early, early uh, ad campaign, so uh, don't say that I'm spoiling anything just yet. Uh, the house gets busted into, Mia shot, ah, Chris, you did it! And there our game begins. And it becomes this big scene, this big story epic that Ethan must go through in order to save his daughter and seemingly avenge his wife. So from there, it becomes this sudden big change. Seven brought back the inventory management system. That is still here in Village. And it is very different, though. It's more akin to Resident Evil 4's, uh, definitely. In fact, I can certainly say without a doubt that the entire man inventory management system, the entire crafting system, the entire, uh, honestly, weapon system is probably all just a template for the eventual 4 remake that I'm sure will be announced at some point. Maybe the Game Awards. Who knows? Uh, but... Everything about 8, I like better than 7. But 7 established so much that, so well, that 8 was able to take that and build a better character, build a great story off its back. So, let's talk about mechanics. Mechanics, shooting, I like it, feels good. At first, gunplay with the pistol feels a little odd, feels a little janky. Uh, but I feel like that's true of almost any Resident Evil game. At the very beginning, your starter pistol is going to feel janky. You're going to be uh, hurting for headshots. But you get used to it and uh, you move on. By the time you start picking up other weapons, uh, you feel better. Now, when it comes to <laughs> lining up headshots, it is a bit difficult. Especially in the early game, I think, of Village as enemies are much more mobile in this game than in 7 and in even Resident Evil's uh, 2 and 3 remake. Now, variety of weapons. You get weapons at a much faster clip in this game than, say, remakes 2 and 3, than 7, and they're getting constantly upgraded, they're getting constantly replaced even with better versions of those weapons. I did think that this whole, um, how should I put it, this whole store system they had where you could constantly buy new weapons and you're constantly getting things throughout of what's, when you think about it, still a very short game, 10 hours it took me, about nine and a half hours to beat the game. Uh, I thought we were getting a lot of weapons and replacing them quite often in a very short amount of time. I would have been happy uh, finding a specific item it's more spaced out over the game and then upgrading them over the course of the game. But overall, though, I'm still happy with what we have. There's a lot of replay value here, uh, especially with depending on which type of weapon you are most attached to. Uh, treasure systems in there, which is something that I have not pre experienced currently in any of the other Resident Evils, except maybe what Resident Evil 4. And I like it. It leads to more map exploration and it just gives you a sense of accomplishment now managing your money isn't actually all that hard so long as you're not buying ammo in game then you're always going to have plenty of money for whatever you need ammo buying ammo is going to suck up your money real fast but you will be able to save up very easily for the upgrades for whatever weapon you want for new weapons and then selling off old weapons etc etc will of course help you make back and eventually take more money with you into your next game cycle. Now, blocking. I'm not a big blocking guy. I never did it at all in Resident Evil 7, and I hardly did it at all in Resident Evil 8, so it's not a useless mechanic, but it is a mechanic that you can play the entire game without even really needing to rely on at all. Uh, other than that, mechanics-wise, uh, I don't think there's much more to say about Village other than uh, I thought everything felt really good. Ethan has obviously had more uh, cardio since Resident Evil 7. He moves faster. He moves in a much better clip. And overall, I enjoyed the mechanics. Uh, I felt like nothing was too hard. 
but nothing was too easy, if that makes sense. Puzzles were not some of these weird abstract things from the older games, but they were there and they were fun and engaging enough, but not something you slowed down and felt the need to sit there and draw out diagrams. So, uh, let take. I know you'll feel one way or about that or another. There's some folks who want the games to be more heavy puzzle intensive like they were back in the game uh, day of the PS1 era or even remake on GameCube. But some people uh, don't like having to just sit there and think about it or having to draw out diagrams or whatnot or do like Silent Hill, I think it is, and have to look up Shakespeare uh, iambic pentameter and whatnot. So I think mechanics wise, the games are the game is super solid. I have nothing to complain about. Now, moving on to story. At this point, I'm gonna start spoiling some stuff. M minor spoilers. I'm not gonna say the end. I'm not going to uh, give any of the big reveals in the game. But obviously, some of the stuff I will be talking about, like the fact that uh, Lady Alcina turns into a monster at some point and then dies, uh, that's one of those things that I don't think is really a spoiler. Because if you didn't know that Lady D, at some point, was going to transform into an ass-ugly monster and die, uh, then I'm not sure what you were expecting from this game. So, that said, moving on. Story-wise, as Ethan proceeds through the village, this I enjoyed so much. Uh, I heard some people complain that you didn't spend a lot of time with any one of the four lords of the village or the uh, Madam Mistress Supreme of the village, that they would have preferred a villain that you spend a lot more time with, like uh, it's Mr. X or the Birkins in RE2. But overall, I enjoyed the way that you progressed through the game. I enjoyed the characters while they were there and thought that they were done in a quality way while they were on screen. So, for example, uh, Lady D, she is front and center. She was the most heavily advertised, hyped up ad campaign thing ever. Everybody thought that Lady D was going to be the main villain of the game. But that is not the case. In fact, uh, out of a nine and a half hour long playthrough, she was only in the game for about maybe two hours. So uh, some folks are screaming, why is that the case? Why didn't she have more game time? Why didn't she disappear and come back later? To which my response is, I thought that she did exactly what she needed to do. She, Bella, Daniela, and Cassandra all did exactly what they needed to do. They played their roles exceptionally well and then left when the time was appropriate, also when they died. So I think that they were extremely, extremely well-written characters who did exactly what they needed to do. The uh, puzzles and exploration of Castle Dimitris uh, was fun. It was very reminiscent of Spencer Mansion and I enjoyed it. Now, we move on from there to the second part of the game, our second Lord, uh, Donna Benevenito and Angie. Now, this part of the game was trying to go for, I guess, more of a classic Chucky uh, doll master type thing and all these different types of horror stories. I hate to say this part of the game actually got spoiled for me. I hear a lot of people say this was the scariest part of the game that... Uh, it was super hype, super intense, super nail hair raising inducing. And unfortunately, though, it got spoiled for me by folks overhyping it, telling me not necessarily what was going to happen, but that this is going to be the scariest part and be aware of what happens when you reach this intersection, yada, yada, yada. And it just resulted in me having either too high of expectations or my expectations were as such that I because I knew something was going to happen that was supposed to be scary I was so prepared mentally that this section of the game ended up not being scary for me uh, and ended up being very short so I still thoroughly enjoy it I think that Donna was kind of an underused character but still quality for the time that she spent in the game we move from there to Moreau 
Moreau, very interesting character, actually. I've seen, and I'm enjoying a lot of the comics and the art I'm seeing regarding him and his interactions with the family uh, and just laughing about it. So, yeah, check out Reddit and Twitter if you want to see some of the interesting art and involving him. Uh, very interesting character, especially if you read a lot of the files and background uh, text and whatnot in the game. You might be tempted to feel sympathetic towards him, but you really shouldn't. Now... Uh, Heisenberg. I'm going to skip over a boss and go straight to Heisenberg because uh, we're just going to talk about who we actually care about. Heisenberg, I think, is kind of like the dark horse in terms of who you thought you would care about. Everyone thought that Lady D would be their favorite character. But I feel like Heisenberg ended up becoming a lot of people's favorite character just through his sheer force of personality and his interactions with Ethan in the story. I feel like he, his section of the game what might have been a little longer than necessary, but he was such a great character to interact with that it was enjoyable that he just brought a whole certain life to his section of the game. And honestly, his section of the game was the most intimidating for me. Now, then we come to the end game. I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, there's a whole fifth section of the game I'm not going to talk about uh, anything that happens here because I don't want to give any spoilers. Let's just say uh, the start of this game is really strong. The middle, you might be able to claim, tapers off a bit, but I do think that Village's end game just ramps things back up and really gives you a lot to think about a lot to uh, really just deal with and then uh, try to accept that uh, it starts strong maybe doesn't uh, it has a nice rise kind of tapers off and then rises again so great game overall I really enjoy this I want to see there are characters in this game that I want to see in a sequel and we know there's going to be Resident Evil 9. We know that already. And we know that it is going to be tied to the Winters somehow. How it's tied to them has not been confirmed yet. There's many speculations, many things I could talk about, but I don't want to spoil. So when it comes down to it, how would I rate this game? How would I put a big old number on it? And if I was to recommend if I were to recommend it somebody would I uh, I'm without a doubt recommending that you buy this game I played it on the PlayStation 5 I didn't have any bugs whatsoever didn't have any crashes didn't have any stutters I played in performance mode the entire time uh, I had absolutely no problems it was a fantastic playthrough and I can't wait to do multiple playthroughs to just because honestly there is a lot here a lot of reasons to uh, basically do multiple playthroughs there's a lot of replay value here i spent a little bit of time in mercenaries not a lot uh having not played any of the mercenary modes in the other games as of yet i can't uh give you an objective saying whether or not it's good or bad compared to previous mercenary modes but i've heard some folks say that it is very stripped down and bare bones compared to other mercenary modes but honestly I feel like it's just it's it should just be viewed as an additional thing it shouldn't be viewed as the selling point of this game the main campaign and the replayability of it is the main selling point of this game that's it because it is that good mercenaries good or bad is a nice fun attachment but everything else that goes into this game makes it worth buying and it's beautiful on the PlayStation 5 I don't know how it plays on previous gen consoles but I've heard nothing bad so I can assume that Capcom did a good job of optimizing for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One now big old number I'm very not sure how I would rate this because I want to give it that big old 9 out of 10 but that's a very high rating I very I am very critical of games and I'm it is very hard for me to give a high rating uh, like I can probably only give a 10 out of 10 to maybe two or three games that I've ever played and nine out of 10s are very hard to come by so just based on what I played here 
I'm going to give this an 8.5 because it's so good, but it's not the best game I've ever played. I've played better games in the Resident Evil franchise. Resident Evil 2 Remake, I think, is a better game, but this is so good. So if I was to rate Resident Evil 2, I would give this a 9 out of 10. I would give this 8.5 because Resident Evil 2 is better. Village is just barely behind it. So that's how I feel. So uh, that's basically what I have to say about this game. If you agree or disagree, that's up to you. I highly recommend you go out and buy it, enjoy it, and move on with your life. So that's where we're at. So let me know what you think, and I'll be sure to respond to you in the comments. So uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications, and I'll catch you next time on Rated RPG. Later.